is Morgan Duval. I'm a physical therapist at Flagstaff Bone and Joint. And today I'm going to walk you through a set of exercises to be done immediately post-operatively if you have recently had an Achilles tendon repair, reconstruction, or lengthening, okay? So you have most likely been given a list of exercises that looks something like this. If you do have this list, it would have been given to you by a physical therapist at Flagstaff Women Joint or possibly by our foot and ankle surgeon, Dr. Gorman. Um, you can look through this list and follow along, all right? So if you have recently had an Achilles uh, surgery, you're most likely at this time non-weight bearing in a cam boot, just like this one. So you are possibly ambulating with crutches, maybe with a walker, you may be on a knee scooter. But what's very important about this time is that you give your Achilles tendon time to heal. So you are not to put any body weight onto that foot at all, all right? All of the exercises here are non-weight bearing. You'll complete all of them in either a sitting or a side lying position. And you will not be putting weight on your foot while you're doing these exercises. A little bit when you're doing the ball rolling, but certainly not your entire body weight, okay? You will need a few things as you go through these exercises. You will need a towel. I have just a bath towel, which will work. You can also use a washcloth, a kitchen towel, a hand towel, anything like that should work. And also a little ball, just like this one. You may be using a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball. I'm using a therapy ball. Therapy ball is actually my pick because it is a little bit softer than the lacrosse ball, but a little bit harder than the tennis ball. So it doesn't hurt so much like the lacrosse ball does when you roll your foot on it, but it also um, isn't so soft as the tennis ball, so it does allow you to get into some of those restricted areas on the bottom of your foot. Okay. Let's get moving. We will not be starting with the ball or the towel. The first thing that you're going to do is remove your boot. All right, so go ahead and take that boot off. You should already be in a seated position. Okay, so boot is off. Very carefully remove the boot and just place it out of your way, okay? So from here, you'll place your foot on the ground. Flat, solid, no problem, okay? If the floor is a little bit too hard, you can always put the towel underneath your foot as well. The first exercise that we are going to do is called toe yoga. Now this is all about getting your toes and your midfoot moving. It's gonna be a little bit difficult at first most likely, but I have faith in you, you can do it. So for toe yoga, you will actually keep your big toe down and lift the other four toes up. You will then put the other four toes down and lift the big toe up, just like this. Now, if you're struggling, if this is a little bit tough, you can actually use your hand to help. Hold the big toe down, lift the other toes up, and hold the other toes down and lift the big toe up actively, okay? So back and forth, swapping which toe or toes are up. We're going to do 10 repetitions of this exercise together. All right, so let's go. One, two, big toe up, other toes down, and then switch, three, switch. If this is hard, don't worry. This is more about uh, getting the little muscles on the bottom of your foot working than it is about how high you can get your big toe, okay? I think we're at six. Last count there a little bit. <laughs> Seven. Good. Eight. We have two more to go. Nine. Remember, you can always use your hands to help if you need. And then last one, ten. Okay. Nicely done, relax those toes. The next exercise is also a toe exercise. It's called um, toe series abduction and adduction. It's the second one on your list here, okay? So for this one, you're gonna be spreading your toes apart and bringing them back together. I recommend lifting your toes up to spread them. If you keep your toes down on the ground and try to spread them, the floor kind of stops you and gets in your way. So sitting up nice and tall, lift all of your toes up and try to spread them apart like I'm doing right now, and then bring them back together. This one's tough too. You can always use your hands to help, kind of pull those toes apart, and then try to hold them apart, and then back. Okay, let's do 10 of these together. Lift the toes, spread one. Lift the toes, spread two. Lift the toes, spread three. This one's tougher than it looks, right? <laughs> Lift the toes, spread four. Really just try to splay the bottom of your foot out. Spread those toes, five. Nice, make it easier as you go, as you loosen up, six. Almost there, 
seven, eight, two more, nine, and then here's the last one, 10. Already done, that wasn't so bad, right? Shake it off. <laughs> okay, next exercise, you are actually going to need your ball. So take your ball, and you'll place the ball underneath the sole of your foot. Okay, so we will do about a 30 second roll with the ball here. You can do a little bit longer if that feels good, 30 seconds to a minute. You're just gently rolling the ball forward and backward along the bottom of your foot, okay? And then you're maybe trying to get the toes a little bit, any areas where you feel restriction. Make sure you're not pushing like crazy hard. You're not like, oh, I'm pushing all your weight down, right? This is a very gentle roll just to get the muscles, the fascia moving on the bottom of your foot in preparation for weight bearing. Now, because you've recently had an Achilles tendon repair, here's what I want you to watch out for. I don't want you to pull your foot so far back that it's stretching your ankle into dorsiflexion. You see this angle right here? I want you to keep this neutral. So I don't want you to pull it back any further than neutral. Try to keep your knee on top of your ankle for this exercise, okay? And that's just so you don't put too much tension on the recently repaired tissue. So you're just rolling side to side, forward, backward, not bringing your foot back like I'm doing right now, keeping it directly underneath the knee or in front, okay, in front of me. So about 30 seconds here, beautiful. And then once you feel pretty good, you feel pretty loose, we're actually going to strengthen the bottom of the foot. So remove the ball from underneath your foot, put it to the side, okay? And the next exercise on your list is called arch lifts. I'm actually going to demonstrate this exercise on my right foot, just so I think you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So foot is going to be flat on the ground. For this exercise, imagine as though you have a string attached to your arch that is pulling the arch up and then relaxing it back down, okay? So you will squeeze the bottom of your foot together. It's gonna to feel like all the little muscles on the bottom of your foot are contracting, and then you will relax. Okay, we're gonna do 10 of those. Make sure you're not scrunching your toes under. Your toes do kind of pull back a little bit, but you're not scrunching the toes, okay? So I'm just gonna use my hand to show what should be happening with the arch. Let's do 10 together. One, down. Two, down, three, yeah, my foot's already getting a little bit tired, four, <laughs> it should feel like the muscles right under here are working, five, pull, yes, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, and then here's your last one, ten. All right, relax it, excellent job. That one can be a little bit tricky, just like the toe yoga. So don't worry if you don't get it right away, it will come with time. Okay, the next exercises on your list are the clamshells. We're actually gonna skip over those um, and go to the final two exercises for now, just because you're already sitting in the chair. The clamshells, you have to lie on your side, so we'll come back to those soon. Okay, so skip forwards until you get to the seated hamstring curl, which is right after the clamshells, okay? So for the seated hamstring curl, you are actually going to need your towel. You'll place the towel directly underneath your foot, okay? And I do recommend doing this on like a hardwood floor. It's definitely gonna slide a little bit easier than if you're on carpet. Now, because you recently had an Achilles tendon repair, watch carefully, this is what you are not to do. You are not to slide your heel back so far that you're getting your foot into dorsiflexion. You see that? I want you to keep your knee directly on top of your ankle or keep your ankle in front of your knee, okay? So we are not sliding it back. That's gonna put too much tension on the repair. The knee should be directly over the ankle, okay? So from here, we are going to slide forwards. You might even feel a stretch through the top of your foot, that's okay. And then slide back, stopping at the line of the knee. Let's do 10 of them. This is number two, bring it back. Number three, bring it back. Number four, back. Five, you may feel a little stretch. Try to keep the ball of your foot down onto the towel. Don't let this happen, right? Pull it back, six, pull it back, seven, pull it back, eight, pull back, nine, pull back, and last one, 10, 
and pull back. Excellent work. Okay, we're all done with that one. Next exercise, you'll scoot your butt back in the chair a bit. If you're short like me, your feet might dangle if they don't, don't worry about it, not required. This exercise is called the long arc quad. Now this exercise is intended to engage your quadricep muscle here, which is super important when you go back to weight bearing. Right now you're not weight bearing. This muscle um, isn't really doing much work and so it's atrophying, right? It's getting weak. Important to strengthen it because it is a major stabilizer of your knee. Super important to have a strong quad for stability down the chain to your ankle, okay? So sitting nice and tall in your chair, you'll kick your legs straight, squeeze your quad, and then slowly bend it back. That's one, let's do it again. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Two, make sure that you're not flexing your ankle as you're doing this. So right now I'm gonna do what you're not supposed to do, right? Don't pull the ankle back. It should just be nice and neutral. That's three. Four, and again, that's because we don't want too much tension on the Achilles repair. Five, so nice neutral ankle. Just let the ankle hang out. This is all about the quad. Six. Seven, eight, two more, nine, and here's your last one, ten. Excellent work, not too bad, right? Okay, we still have the clamshells. Now for the clamshells, I'm going to demonstrate them on the floor for simplicity's sake. I do not recommend that you get down on the floor to do this exercise immediately post-operatively. I recommend that you lie on your side, either on your couch, possibly on your bed. Um, so if you need to pause the video and go get set up, that's totally fine. Make sure you put your boot back on, use your crutches, your walker, or your knee scooter to get over to the couch or the bed. Get comfortable, take the boot off again, lying down on your non-operative side with your operative side up. All right, so take a moment, pause the video if you need to, and then we will get going with the clamshells next. I'm going to shimmy down onto the floor here because I did not just have surgery, and so it's pretty easy for me to do. I'm gonna get my chair out of the way and lie down on my right side. So I'm demonstrating as though my left side is my operative side. Okay, so you'll lie down on your side. You can even use your hand to support your head. Knees are gonna be bent. Hips are stacked, knees are stacked, ankles are stacked, okay? And what's super important for the clamshells is that you don't let your hips roll back like this. Imagine as though there's a post going through your hips that's holding your hips steady and stable, okay? Now there are four clamshells. We're gonna go through them one at a time. Number one, you keep your ankles touching, you separate your knees and bring them back together. All right, let's do it. Are you ready? That was one. Two, it does not matter how high up your knee goes. What's more important here is squeezing your glutes and keeping your hips stacked. Yes. Number five. Number six. So what you're not going to do is this, right? You're not going to roll back. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine, one more. Number 10, Oof, okay. We have three more to do, three more versions of the clamshell. Version number two, knees stay touching. You're actually going to internally rotate your hip and separate the ankles, all right? So that's one. Two, try to point your knee down to the ground. Three, you should feel a little bit of a burn right here on the outside of your hip, four. Five, six, seven. This is targeting a muscle called the gluteus medius, which is right here where my hand is. Two more, nine. And then here's your last one, 10. Excellent. Were those easy? Well, the next two are not, so get ready for it. <laughs> so the next two exercises are that same motion where you're internally rotating at the hip, but the starting points are different. So clamshell number three, you separate your knees and your ankles, and this is your starting point, okay? You will rotate your hip inwards, tap your knees together, and then come back. What it's not is this. It's not a knee clap. It's a rotation. So the heel actually goes up. That's one, two, three, good, four. This one's hard, isn't it? You should really feel a burn right here on the side of your hip. Five. Seven, almost done. I'm definitely feeling the burn. I don't know about you guys. Eight, whoo, nine, and then one more. Ten. Okay, take a break. We have one more clamshell to do. It's the same motion with your.
your knee is clamshell number two and clamshell number three, but this time your starting position is different. You'll separate your knees and your ankles and bring your knee back into the same plane as your hip right here, okay? So lying on your side, knees in the same plane as your hip, you will rotate your knee down and in, try to tuck your top knee behind your bottom knee, and then bring it back up. Yeah, try to keep the knee and the hip in the same plane, don't let the hip roll back, okay? So let's go for it. This is one, two, three, almost done. Four, five, you should really be feeling a burn in the muscle here called your gluteus medius, which is a major stabilizer of your hips, knee, and ankle down the chain. Super, super important. Seven, eight, nine, one more, and 10. Nicely done. That glute should be burning. And remember, I know you did not just get glute surgery, but when you do go back to weight bearing, having a strong and stable glute is going to assist with your ankle stability. So it will actually make it quite a bit easier and less painful for you to get back to walking when the time comes. Okay, so those are your exercises, guys. What I would like you to do is rewind the video, start from the beginning, and do that whole series again. So you should be doing two sets of 10 of each one of these exercises one to two times a day, four to five days a week. Remember, you should never push into pain, okay? You might feel a little stretch, a little bit of tension. There should never be any sharp pains. And if there are, make sure you're backing off from the exercise a little bit. Because you did also recently have an Achilles repair, you should not at any time be allowing your foot to be cranked back like this, right? So always make sure that your foot remains neutral. We talked about this in all the exercises where that's possible. I just wanna go over it again. No pulling back on the foot. Don't try to stretch your calf right now. There will be time for that, I promise. But right now it's all about protecting the repair and just maintaining and progressing your mobility in a safe manner so that when you do get to the point where you can start stretching and strengthening that calf, you're gonna be set up to do so perfectly. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck with your recovery. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Morgan Duval. You can find me in the physical therapy gym at Flagstaff Bone and Joint, or you can send me an email. It's my first initial, last name, M Duval, D-U-V for Victor, A-L, just one L, at Flagstaff Bone and Joint, all spelled out, dot com. Thank you so much.